The majority of air pollution comes from human activities. There are various types of human-made air pollution. For example, when we burn fossil fuels, this releases greenhouse gases into the air. Because it's a constant form of air pollution, it contributes to climate change. Smog is another type of air pollution. It reduces visibility and also has serious health effects. Smog can be divided into two categories, sulfurous and photochemical. Sulfurous smog is made up of chemical compounds called sulfur oxides, occurring when sulfur-bearing fossil fuels are burnt, such as coal. Photochemical smog, also called ground-level ozone, this happens when there is a reaction between sunlight, nitrogen oxides, and volatile organic compounds. Nitrogen oxides come from car exhaust, coal power plants, and factory emissions. Volatile organic compounds are released from petrol, paints, and various paint solvents. Smog not only creates a haze, reducing visibility, but it also harms plants, irritates your eyes, and causes respiratory distress. Another type of air pollution is toxic pollutants. These are chemicals such as mercury, lead, dioxins, and benzene, which are released during gas or coal combustion waste incineration, or the burning of petrol. In addition to adverse environmental effects, toxic air pollution can also cause serious health problems such as cancer, reproductive complications, and birth defects. While air pollution has many negative consequences, there are solutions. We can limit toxic pollutants, smog, and greenhouse gases by decreasing the use of fossil fuels for transportation, manufacturing, and electricity generation. Reducing air pollution is crucial in helping to repair human and environmental health, as well as slowing the rate of climate change. We study all the negative effects before we build anything. So there's a whole group of engineers and computers doing long-term studies of all the negative retroaction. Interlinked, sustainable cities would feature cyber centres to coordinate industries, transportation systems, public health care and the flow of goods and services. These cybernetic centres would connect all cities and help with environmental recovery. So our goal is to replace all fossil fuels. There's 30 times more solar available worldwide over land and high solar locations than we need to power the entire world for all purposes in 2030. And there's seven times more wind than you need to do the same thing. So we are looking to combine all clean renewable energy sources that are available, wind, solar power, geothermal power, hydroelectric tidal power and wave power. We would need about 4 million large wind turbines to power 50% of the entire world for all purposes. You might say, well, that sounds like a lot. But keep in mind, during World War II, the world produced about 800,000 aircraft in the space of five to six years. That was decades ago. And now we have better technologies and abilities to ramp up production. So it really comes down to willpower. It's not a technological or economic blockade to solving this problem. It's really a social and political blockade.